Oh. Welcome to the Delbred Book Club. No books to read today, nor were there books yesterday. I wanted to crack something open again, like how I cracked a can open in the first video, but I already opened my shit. Pie is here. But cough break. <coughs> no, he never changes. Today, I woke up and chose crime. I see so much beautiful art these days, all over my feed. Twitter knows what I like, so it just showers me with beautiful anime art. It's all I want to see. Twitter, I mean, X, I'm not calling it X, but it knows what I like. It shows me so many beautiful art pieces. But I'm starting to run into this problem. I love all of these beautiful art pieces and the, the cool lighting and the perspective. And I look at it and think, mm, yes, I should try and up my art game. I need to start making stuff that looks like this. But the problem is it's all AI. All the stuff I'm getting recommended is just AI. All over my Twitter is AI and it, Yo, how am I supposed to match with that? I can't do what a robot does. I wish I was one of them. You know what AI does? Steals other art. People train the programs by inserting pre-existing real art to make their own. It used to be so easy to spot AI, but it's becoming more and more difficult. But not for me. I smell it from a mile away. I know, I know what you did. Pitbull mode activated. <laughs> I started cooking up this video, like, Yes, I got a criminal idea for a video and a way to practice my rendering skills. Let me start right now without doing any research. This will be excellent. And then I actually searched it up midway through and realized somebody already did this like a month or so ago. I hadn't seen this, but since they did it first, I'll drop a link in the description to their video. Just so you know, they did this first. Go check it out also. Their art is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, I see beautiful art, quote unquote art that inspires me. And then I realize it's AI, which means it's stolen, which means it's been recycled and reworked and regurgitated into the public domain, which makes it free reign, baby. I don't give a fuck. So today I'm stealing. I exclusively draw fan art lately just because it makes me happy. And right now I'm very fixated on Genshin. Let's begin with this one. I saw this one and I immediately thought, oh, this is easily Farina, right? But I don't know, something took over me. I wanted to draw Tignoy in the water because I've been thinking of this idea for a long time. I thought of him in an oasis, refreshed after trudging through the desert for hours dying in the heat. So yes, I did Tignoy. I didn't record much of the process of this one because I thought about making this a video like halfway through. So here's the process of me stealing the lighting down to the exact detail. I noticed in the AI picture, she has like hundreds of these little hair flicks. So I wanted to create some of those also, but I couldn't put too many in because Tignoy has the straightest of straight hair. Exactly. Definitely compensating for something there. I always struggle with rendering eyes for some reason because I'll make them super detailed and then zoom out and the rest of the art is super sketchy and rough looking and they just don't fit at all. It's such a common thing of like zooming in, doing something it's like, and you're like, oh yes so much detail and you zoom out and it's like Ugh. this one i think i was okay with because i tried to make the whole thing super sharp and more detailed than i would usually go for so i think i managed to let my subpar skills with rendering eyes slide on this occasion i'll show the full time lapse at the end but as you can see here i started a background without looking at any references and even in this rough stage i knew it was not gonna work out bro looking like he stepped into ms paint since i was going so detailed on everything else to try and recreate this ai look i got my ass in game and ran to sobek oasis to get a good background reference. I'm so bad at backgrounds, but turns out taking time and patience does actually work out. Who would have thought? I only stuck one palm tree in the back because I began to get tired, but I feel like it gets the point across that this is an oasis. One of the last things I did on Tignity was the hair, mostly because in the AI picture, it's so detailed and intricate that I figured it was gonna be a pain, but it turned out not too tricky. Besides, if you zoom in on the AI hair, you start to see some of the strands just lose their way. Not to mention the shoulder that seems to have snapped upwards here in like a 90 degree I hope she's okay. I added some sunlight up top like in the AI and then gave him a tail which I somehow forgot to do at the start. I always seem to forget his tail. It's like a really important part of his design and, and I just never remember that it's there. I drew some water droplets falling off him and, and then I added some blinding highlights to the back of his hair. I really like this looking art. I think a lot of people do which is why so many AI pictures use it. Here's the full time lapse. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out mostly because I never bothered to do all this lighting like the shadow of the hair on the shoulder or the the background. I never bother with backgrounds. I also really like this palm tree. It ended up kind of sketchy and rough. The leaves don't make sense in there, but hey, I'm recreating AI. They would have done the same. I don't really like how the water looks. I didn't put as much effort into making it look like water, so the AI kind of beat me on that one, but only because I got lazy, okay? I'm, like I say, I'm not a robot, okay? 
I'm not AI. After finishing it, I was mad at myself for not making it Farina because man, it would have been perfect for Farina with the water, but something just took a hold of me. I was determined to do one of Farina since I let her down with the last one, but it was tricky to find another one that was interesting enough for her and, and that fit her as well as that one would have. But I hunted through my Twitter timeline trying to find something that I thought could be turned into her. But all I see is big titty girls and that's just you know, that's just not really, it's not really Farina. I was scrolling through pages and pages of this stuff forever. My brain started shutting down and melting down into my throat and I got ill. Because there's just so many and they all look good, but that's annoying. I mean, it's all completely lifeless. No skill, passion or work went into these whatsoever. But finally, I was caught by one. This one. I thought this could be Farina in the court of Fontaine. And yeah, I don't like doing backgrounds and the laziest artist to exist. But hey, it's gonna be Farina. I love her. I wouldn't mind putting in the work for her. And I literally abandoned her in the last one that would have been perfect. So I owe it to her to try a little harder. I'm not gonna recreate the style here with the way they drew the character just because she's not really looking like Farina. Since this one is mostly focused on the background, I decided to get right into Fontaine and find a spot to reference right away. I learned my lesson after trying to DIY one in the last piece. I started to sketch the background, but I soon regretted this choice because I didn't sketch the background in the last one and it turned out okay. So I was kind of like, damn, did I, did I fuck this one up? Do I throw this one away? Start over? But I followed my own advice and I persevered. I was patient. I kept going. After throwing in colors though, I hated it even more. Farina was going here, like in the original, but she would honestly be the easy part, so I was leaving her till last. You gotta brave it through the vegetables and save the meat for last, you know? I hated how this background was looking, but I know this is part of the process, right? Trust the process, right? AI could have done this in five seconds. I know why you wanna use AI, because this is pain. I managed to get into a rhythm with it by playing constant distractions. Okay, follow me, do exactly as I do. Hi. I can't fucking turn into a bacon. <laughs> Come get it. <laughs> kind of like when you're knitting you know your hands are working but you have background entertainment to keep you sane so that you don't get too deep into your thoughts but then I got pulled out of my rhythm by a coffee break in a cafe that, like it's decor was generated by AI then my friend left her stuff in the middle of the marketplace and threw me out of the car to go fetch it where she then abandoned me for half an hour fun side quest but it was fucking freezing. Once I finally returned home, I tried to tackle it again, but with how long it was taking just to render an eighth of the details in this background, I finally threw in the towel. I put down my pen and I gave up. I went to sleep because I hadn't slept in about 30 hours. But it was not over. Through much patience and pain, I managed to semi-render the background to a point I was happy enough with. I still kind of hate it, but by my standards it's passable. I just threw in a bunch of effects and blur and stuff to try and make sense of it, I don't know. The perspective is still incorrect, but by this point I was too far in to make big changes, so I still technically did give up on it. I sketched in a shadow of Farina's figure and did some shoddy line work as always, but I'm a hundred times happier just to be drawing a character and not that background anymore. I realized I forgot a bunch of Farina details as well along the way, but that's okay. Fixing errors on a character is fine, no problem. But the background? No, too far gone. Not touching that. Nervously did Farina's eyes, which is warranted here because she's a lot smaller in the picture, so I can't go crazy with details or it's gonna have the, you know, the zoom out problem. She doesn't really fit into the background at all. And I don't mean the shadows. Her being 10 times brighter isn't the problem. I just haven't done all that yet. But just the style of her is completely different to the background and she just looks so out of place. I continued anyway, mainly for the sake of this video since I now wanted to make this out of it. I can't say I'm proud of it. I really need more practice rendering any kind of background. I think my lack of confidence really shows in this one, but oh well. For the last one, because I wanted to do three, I decided to dial it back and do something I'd have more fun with, aka something without a major background, and I settled on this one. Easy background because the focus is the character, which is my favorite kind of way to draw. I'm so glad I did this one last because it ended up being really fun. For this one I didn't stray very far from the AI like I did much so much with the others. I really like the look of the sleeve so I decided to draw Xiao and I just was gonna play dress up with him. I'm not sure in what context he would wear this. I also very much plan to give him the long ponytail because long hair Xiao is my favorite concept. We also got some AI magic going on with the hands here. Got the background out of the way real quick so I could get to drawing Xiao because oh my god I didn't want to go through another background. I sketched in my Xiao and when I say sketch don't think that means I'm doing a light art layer over this. I'm not. 
we're working with this. I don't do line art. I tried my hand at doing line art and it always looks like ass for me. So I'm sticking with this. Also, I did consider changing up the outfit just because I have doubts about him wearing this and about copying the AI this closely. But then I remembered AI copies whatever the hell people command it to. So I'll stick with it. The hair makes absolutely no sense because my reference was artificially created, but I think it's fun to draw nonsense every now and then. Hair might not do that, but Xiao wouldn't wear this and Xiao isn't real either. So what does it matter? It matters when AI does it though. I have double standards. I use the curves tool, whatever you call it, to give the background some more contrast because I always suffer with doing things too lightly. I'm always scared to go heavier on the colors when I'm first putting them in. I don't have much footage of the coloring process because I was honestly just having fun with this one. While doing any of the shadows, I reference the AI really closely because I actually really like how they look. They may make no sense if you look closely, but super intricate and detailed shadows aren't something I do often, so I wanted to capture the look that I liked in this picture as accurately as I could. With the eyes, this time I felt a lot more confident with them since I'd pulled it off in the last two and this one was focused entirely on the character so the more detail the better. I did procrastinate rendering the spear because if it's not the character, I don't care. I added all kinds of glow to the hair at the back and random lighter strands. Throughout the process, I clean up the lines where they need to be tighter and then in some, like for this hair, I just erased it entirely because it doesn't need as much definition being in the background. Some advice, don't use this many layers. Do as I say, not as I do. You really don't need them and it just gets confusing when you spot something out of place and then you have to go through every single layer to find the root of the problem. I make my canvas big enough so that I can only have 25 layers because when it's bigger, it'll just be a like higher definition overall. Only having 25 layers usually isn't a problem. Just in this one, I was kind of being a control freak about it. I wouldn't let any of these layers cross contaminate with each other. If this was a different color, it's going on a different layer. <laughs> the last things I did were the leaves or petals or whatever they are around him and some definition to his eyelashes. This took about 12 hours in total, but it really didn't feel like long. It felt like an hour because I just enjoyed the process of it a lot more than the last one. And it's always encouraging to see things coming together in a way that you like. To end things off, I just wanna say, besides triggering my kleptomania, AI art really makes me sad. I look at it and I feel amazed at how good it looks and then I feel disappointed that a computer did it in three seconds. Meanwhile, it would take an artist hours or days after years of practice and skill. I think AI can be useful as it was to me to reference the shadows on the clothing or to generate ideas, but I still don't think it's a fair trade, especially when so many try to pass it off as real art and when so many of these AI creators are taking jobs from real artists. It's not fair. I also want to make a disclaimer that in no way am I saying that my art is better than the AI. Not that I'm hyping the AI up, but just that I did this for fun. My Farina background experience should be telling enough that I don't consider my work superior to others by any means. I wondered whether I should credit the creators of the AI too, but I don't see why I should. Did they credit the artist they stole from? No, they didn't. None of them do. I went through so many looking for any kind of sources on where they get their prompts from or what they train with and nobody nobody has anything to say about that so I won't be offering them the same courtesy with that I'll say goodbye from me and from Pi look look, look. say something my guy all right I'm out <laughs>